Welcome back to Hannity and Combs. I'm Chuck Dorr sitting in for Sean Hannity tonight. President Jimmy Carter has received criticism over a section of his new book, Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid. Critics say a line in the book appears to justify Palestinian terrorism. Carter offered a, an apology at a recent appearance at Brandeis University for the controversial line calling the wording of it stupid and has since changed future copies of the book to omit the sentence. But Carter still largely defends the book, saying he is often stigmatized and has been hurt by some of his recent critics. Joining us now is former Carter Center board member Steve Berman. Hi, Steve. Welcome on the show. Good to be here. So anyway, uh, what is your take on all this uh, with, the, uh, with the, well, the, the, what, the article in the book and this, all that? Well, obviously, the, the, the quote in the book troubled us greatly, but there was plenty of other things that troubled us, too, and we've talked about this on the Hannity and Combs show already. Uh, the problem that we're faced with now, though, is that we're faced with a consistency of message, and that is that uh, President Carter goes to Brandeis, speaks beautifully, and uh, is very well received uh, by the respectful crowd, and says he was sorry he uh, wrote that particular sentence. However, just last week on Al Jazeera, the Arab media outlet for the entire Arab world, President Carter has asked what he considers to be terrorism, and he says he has an opportunity to uh, separate himself from terror. Instead, what he says is he does not consider rocket attacks from Gaza and to Israeli civilian populations to be acts of terror. So what we're seeing is an inconsistent message from Carter, even though on one hand, in front of an Anglo audience at Brandeis University, he disavows terror. On the other hand, when he has a chance to speak to the Arab world, he sends a completely, entirely different message. Well, you know, it doesn't surprise me on what he wrote, because if we go back to Iran, and back in the 70s, when he uh, forced the Shah of Iran to cooperate with the Ayatollah, who the Ayatollah at that time was trying to overthrow uh, uh, Jim, uh, the, the, the country, and, uh, and Carter forced him to cooperate, and eventually uh, the Ayatollah did chase him out of the country, and now look where the situa situation we're in right now with Iran. That's right. Well, I mean, we're not, we're not here to go over old news. The news today is a book that's been highly incendiary. He says that his uh, uh, chapter, Chuck, the name of the book, uh, Chuck, uh, uh, Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid, is meant to promote and provoke discussion. Well, I have a question for the president. If that's what he wants, how come he'll only appear in sanitized events? Why is it that he won't appear with uh, great minds like Ken Stein on the stage to debate his book or... Professor Ken Stein from Emory University or Professor Alan Dershowitz from Harvard University. By the way, Dershowitz, Steve, it's Alan. Welcome back to our show. Dershowitz praised him for his appearance at Brandeis, where Dershowitz was present. They didn't debate, but he was very praiseworthy of what Jimmy Carter said as we look at him on the podium there. That's right. He was praiseworthy, and, and as well he should be. The, the president handled himself well. But what Alan also said, I don't know if you saw this, Alan, was uh, what Dershowitz also said is uh, there are two Jimmy Carters. And what I, when I refer to the Al Jazeera comment, we indeed see there are two Jimmy Carters. Can you name anybody or many other people who have done more to promote world peace and to bring peace to that region of the world than Jimmy Carter? No, and as I said to you on your show uh, just last week, Alan, I, I believe that he was well-deserving of the Nobel Peace Prize, but what has happened in the interim between the time he won the prize and the writing of this book is he somehow lost his way because... But wait a minute, he says that, he, he said, look, it was a bad sentence, it was stupidly written... He apologized for the sentence. Don't you have to look at a man like Jimmy Carter in terms of his whole body of work and his life's dedication to peace and not s scrutinize every sentence in a book which could be poorly edited, perhaps, in one particular case? I Isn't don't think that was poorly edited when you look at the whole body of work within the book. I mean, what the president consistently says is he is... Uh, uh, that the book is, is, is meant to promote discussion, and yet he won't discuss. What, uh, in the book, for example, he lists a chronology of events, Alan, and he makes uh, no passing reference at all to the Holocaust, which we all know is a, is, was a seminal event in the formation of You don't think of the it's a Holocaust denier, do you? Oh, no, I'm not saying that. No, I'm say what I'm saying, though, is he doesn't understand that a, a critical event in the formation of the state is totally ignored in his book. He makes two references to it in a chronology. He leaves out, uh, I think it's seven years. During the Holocaust, he doesn't even re reference it in his book. But again, it's uh, the body of work. It seems like there's a cottage industry now dedicated to destroying Jimmy Carter, who's been very outspoken about this president, our current president, outspoken about the war in Iraq. 
He's written some very scathing op-ed pieces, and it seems that has engendered a great deal of attack against Jimmy Carter. And I wonder if this is part of a larger effort to discredit him. No, you're not going to find that from anybody like myself or the uh, 14 other members of the Board of Councils who resigned, for, as a matter of fact. We're very big fans of, of President Carter and what he's done around the world. However, if he wants to assume a position of honest broker and mediator yeah. in this particular part of the world or in any other conflict resolution, he has to behave like a conflict uh, resolution specialist, and that is recognize the essential truths on both sides, Alan, and he only places the blame for this mess at the feet of the Israelis. Okay, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. It's good to be here.